Hi and welcome to another video for the Are We The Baddies. I'm Ed and today I'm just going to be talking about masking tape and well the types I use and how much I use to get these straight lines that will hopefully appear on this. Now the back here, just ignore that because I originally had a plastic bag that's what I've taken off so far to get to this. When I've got large surface areas like this I just tend to put a plastic bag over it, tape it up so it saves you a lot of tape and well the bag just covers a lot more area a lot quicker than taping it up. I tend to use a what is it? <coughs> duck masking tape to cover all the parts I need but if I really want detailed lines nice straight lines frog tape and this is the delicate surface stuff this stuff is brilliant which hopefully when I get to do this line here, should come off as a nice straight line, which you should see in 720p, if I've put the settings right. Um, some people have asked about mask and tape, and why mask when you could just hand paint? Well, you do the first layer of, say, this. This is a white body, but with a red nose. If I was to hand paint it, I'd have to do one coat in red, and then a second coat and then possibly a third coat. So the amount of time that would take, if you put that into putting masking tape on and then spraying it and then giving it another spray, it's pretty much the same time. And with spraying, you don't get any lines. I don't know, I know this isn't really focusing in well, but there's no lines at all, just because it's, it's spray paint. Uh, I've already put previously a yellow if you look at my Instagram, I've already put a yellow stripe going up this, because this is going to be Torg Borderlands inspired. Hold on, let's get this off. So this is just the duck stuff, which reveals the yellow frog tape underneath. That's already. Oh, let me just flip that around for you. This is the front <coughs> that will go on. Hold on. This rifle. So that isn't anywhere near finished yet. So now you can see. I don't know if you can see as well. It's, as well as putting all loads of straight lines, I cut up loads of little bits. That isn't focusing at all. So I'll pull it back here. I cut up lots of little straight bits and curved bits. So I mean, look at that. So yeah. I spent all day yesterday doing this while we had sunshine. So you could shove it outside. And it would dry a lot quicker than on a a now grey rainy day that we're having today. Right now I'm pulling this part off here and that red part in the middle is what I've painted with spray paint. Now I've put on a couple of layers of uh, frog tape with some duct tape over it so the duct tape should catch the initial spray and then the frog tape would make it hold its lines if that makes sense. What I mean is the fir well, the first time you spray something the tape on top should catch it, and then any other paint should be held because there's far less on the underlayers and the underlayers of the frog tape. So let's take that off and see how straight the line is. That's good so far. And you can see the second layer underneath. See those little bits there? Should have caught that. If not, I can always paint over them and just fix them. And rip that off. Now to get these off. So you don't scratch it, I use cocktail stick, which are brilliant little things, because they're wood, they don't scratch as mud as if I was using a craft knife. Get that one off as well. So far, so good. Like I said, I've been putting pictures recently up on Instagram, you know, three pictures in a row to show before, middle and after. I've taken off masking tape, but I figured a video would be better. Right, let's see. 
Okay, a little bit there. That's no problem. I can repaint over that. A little bit there. That's okay. You can paint over that. And okay, a bigger bit there. Still not a problem because it's on white. There you go. <clears throat> and believe me, it's a lot quicker when all things are considered. Oh, by the way, this yellow, that's not frog tape, that's actually spray paint. There's more frog tape just under here. Hold on. That's what the whole thing looks like. So, remove all this tape. That's what that looks like. Uh, went under there, and the, luckily it's on the white, so that's that can be painted, that can be touched up. I'm just going to remove this part and that part, and the ignore this back because that's got to be hand painted up. And we remove this on the top. Ooh. Take up there, but ignore that. Basically, that's what I've got. Let me put that. So you've got that that I previously masked off. Then this red that I'd masked on top of that to get this effect. And if we flip over the other side, that's it with its old masking tape still on. So, so from that to that, not too shabby. Although it does take so much time I do wonder why I do it <laughs> but when you find something you do you just keep doing it so that's one of like that I've also did last night this is a rear guard also for the same rifle I just can't fit it in See? and that will be white up on this part and grey down here now for this one I just used duct tape because I'm not using I'm not searching for super delicate lines those lines there if you put three layers of frog tape on uh, three layers of duct tape sorry they'll catch it no problem so all under there's my stuff all under there and in there and in there now for those curves I just cut lots of little straight pieces as you saw before I just put them round in a curve and then put another layer on top and another layer on top. As long as you catch that initial spray or two, the thick, when you're spraying it, the first mist, the other two should catch it. Although, as you can see there, sometimes it always does get through. Mind you, that's after three what, two or three layers of red. So, like I said, it can be painted over. But there you go. That's just a quick... I've got to take all this off as well. Might as well be here for that. Off, take that off, cocktail stick this part. Oh, that's a better line. Look at that. Oh, look at that. That's what happens when you don't push it down firmly. I usually use a cocktail stick and push it right along the edge. I must not have done that. Look at that. Oh. Look at that. Another little bit here, get that off, Another little bit there, yank that off. This stuff is great as well because it doesn't leave, um, when you put the tack, because it's delicate, it doesn't leave any, um, Res residue, that's the word. It doesn't leave any residue after it's done. So you can see that white, there's no smear, there's no anything. If you use a cheaper, larger tape, that can leave smears on certain brands and certain colours. If you use this on black paint, it will leave 
um, traces of its stickiness, which is a nightmare because then you have to get another piece of this tape and slowly um, unstick it off by pushing it on and lifting it off. But there you go. That's it. I'm not happy with that, but what can you do? Um, and then flip it over to the front of the gun. That's all going to get painted over. You know, you'd think I'd figure out how to work this camera by now, wouldn't you? There you go. So not bad. Well, like I said, this isn't without any detailing. This is with no. I've got to do all that next. It does look nice and damaged, though. See, I've done all this painting and then I have to go and start using sandpaper to weather it. So you make it all nice and then you've got to make it all not nice. <laughs> there you go. That's a quick video about masking tape and my adventures in it. Um, thank you very much.